Today we're going to talk about family. We're going to talk about the spiritual family that God has given to us. We're going to talk about being part of a local church, for being part of a spiritual family. And let me show you a picture that, that's spread out in the internet for years now. It's two babies. They're actually twins. And beautiful, beautiful story. This is uh, Paul and Heidi Jackson uh, gave birth to, to twins, except that it was three months before term. So six months in the womb of their mother, and then, you know, they, it was like the baby Kiri was one of the twins, and then the other was Braille. Kiri was two pounds and three ounces. Two pounds. The other one, Braille, was about two pounds exact. And they, they were in, the, in, in both incubators. Uh, and what happened was that Kiri, the bigger baby, was growing very well, very healthy. The one uh, uh, Braille was not doing very well. Uh, 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 the breathing was, was labored. The heartbeat was very fast. And uh, in, in fact, what happened was... What happened was they, they, they were just very concerned that something wrong will, will, will take place. And, you know, what happened was Braille, after, uh, there, there was a point when Braille became critical. The, the, the baby that was not growing very well and with, with all the physical problems. And the nurse decided to break all the rules. And she said, I've tried everything. I've suctioned her breathing pipe. Uh, there was no improvement. I, I increased the oxygen in the incubator. There was, there was no improvement. And so she decided to break all the rules. She got Braille, the baby, you know, two pounds baby, and put it into the incubator of her twin sister, Kiri, who was doing much better. And what happened is the moment she closed the door of the incubator, uh, Braille snuggled up with Kiri, and automatically the breathing became stable, uh, heartbeat became stable, and then Kiri, the stronger baby, put her arm around her baby sister. This was in 1995. Today, these two girls, twin girls, are now 13 years old, strong and healthy. Why did I share that with you? Ask me why. Because you and I, we need a hug. If we want to be healed, if we want to be blessed, we need family. We need friends. Amen? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. From Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47, let's read together. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. And many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together, had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Thank you, Lord. And I'd like to greet all those who are watching this on television. I'd like to greet all those who are watching this on video in local feasts, whether they be in Cebu or Davao or Samar or Leyte or Cagayan de Oro or, or in Luzon or, or people in, um, in uh, Dubai or Jakarta or US or Canada or Australia or New Zealand. God bless you and God be with you. Let me begin by, by something that, that you know, I was thinking about. I, I imagine myself celebrating my 60th wedding anniversary. That, 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 means that, that means that I'll be 92 years old and that my wife will be at her, at her you know, very young, at the age of 87. And we'll be on the couch, and I'm imagining this, you know, my wife would tell me at the age of 87, love, there were a few years ago when we'd be sitting in this couch and there would be no distance between us. And of course, I would rush by her side. And then she would say, love, a few years ago, if you sit right beside me, you would hold my hand. And of course, I would hold her hand right away. And then she would tell me, you know, love, just a few years ago, if you would be sitting like that and holding my hand, you remember that time? You'd be rubbing my back. You'd be nibbling on my ear. And I would stand up right away and get out of the room. And my wife will say, where are you going? And I'd say, 
just to get my teeth. <laughs> Everybody say this, I need, I need someone. You know, the Bible says, the book of Genesis says that man was not made to be alone. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about family. I'm talking about not even your blood family. I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about a spiritual family that will surround you where you could grow old with. Amen? Tell someone beside you, let's grow old together. Amen? I, I, want, I want my friends right now to be my friends when I'm 90. You like that? We need, we need people that we can grow old with. Amen? And, and I pray that you find that in this community, in this church. I pray that, you know, the Catholic church is huge. But here is your local church. And, and your parish is, is your local church. This, this community is your local church. And together, together we can just make that decision and say, I'm going to work on this. You know, I, I'd like to share with you something. There was a time when I used to say yes to a lot of invitations from prayer groups, from communities, all over all over the Philippines. And I would be able to say yes, not anymore. But I remember that when people would invite me to give a talk, I would talk to the leader of the prayer group or the community and they would say, Brother Bo, please give a talk on commitment. I would always, always hear that from them. The most, most common topic they would ask me to give is about commitment. And, and of course, I'll say, why? And, and they say, oh, we're, we're shrinking in number. People are no longer attending our prayer meetings. People lack commitment. I turn around the table and I say, is it really true? that people are lacking in commitment. I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters, I believe it's true. People lack commitment. But it's also true, also true, equally true, that when people are not attending prayer meetings, when people are not attending communities, it's also true that perhaps they are no longer being blessed by that community. You got what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in any way ridiculing or, or denying the fact that people lack commitment. That, that's true. But it's also important for the leader to ask the question, why are people not attending community or prayer meetings anymore? Maybe because they're not receiving the blessings. There are 10 very important blessings that they need to receive from community. And I'd like to share this with you now. Ask me, what are they? The first one is that they need to meet God. Everybody say, blessing number one. You meet God in a special way. Matthew 18 verse 20, let's read together. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. There was one woman who came up to me just six months ago here at the feast. And she said, Brother Bo, I have a request. I said, what's that? She said, can we just take away worship from the feast? I like your talk. Let's just go straight to the talk. And, you know, I told her, I, I've spoken to about a hundred, every, every, you know, for a hundred people who come to me, 99 would tell me they love worship. And she said, no, I don't like worship, brother. I'm the one out of the 99. I don't like worship. You know, raising your hands and, you know, seeing. I, I, just, just let me listen to your talk. And I say, sister, worship is not an introduction to my talk. You know, in one sense, worship is more important than my talk. Because it's in worship, communal worship, where you meet God. Is that clear? Worship is important. Everybody say that. Worship is important. Because I meet God. so much for your monthly tithes and love offering to the Rigma family, without which this broadcast won't be possible. We know that God will reward you abundantly for your generosity. God bless you.